Calderon, who understands all of that, although at times he plays well enough to be a starter, hey, he's welcome to play in that role. Off we go to Madrid, Spain, and the opening tip has just happened. Enjoy the game, everybody. Extra happy to have you with us. We expect a competitive basketball game here today. If they're going to feature Papadopoulos early in this offense, put some pressure. Axel Erval missing right there, and Ford wants to push the pace. TJ leaves it behind for Rosho to stare, but she throws it home. TJ to Rosho. The speed of TJ Ford is unlike anything that these European players have seen in a while. Ervel crashing glass, and the first foul on him. He is an active player, throws his body around, reminds me a little of Fran Vasquez. His athletic ability and hop, you see the forward look of Ford just blowing by, the tremendous vision of the trailing Nesterovich. You're right, Axel Irvine, you can bet the Denver Nuggets are keeping an eye on him. They drafted him in the second round a couple years back. Joey Graham is a big year for him, and he gets the start here. They've been shuttling it around. Jason Capono started the first game, Carlos Delfino the second game, and now Joey Graham starts game three at the three, an undecided position for this team. They've got a whole lot of depth there, but again, credit to T.J. Ford with an excellent job in the half court that time, penetrating and then picking it out. What a shot. Here is Charles Smith. And he throws it away. Charles, I was just about to talk to you, uh, about you and, and read your whole resume. I'm going to wait till he does something nice. <laughs> so it'll sink in. It won't take long. We've seen him enough to know he's a talented player. No doubt about it. 32-year-old American. Starter over here for Real Madrid, one of the best teams in Europe. And they are looking to get to the EuroLeague Final Four, which will be played on this court in this arena. Ross showed the miss, and obviously that worked out well for Panathinaikos last year. Having the Final Four on their home court, and that was a decided advantage as they beat Cheska Moscow for the chip. Papadopoulos with that craftiness in the low block. It's a good matchup right here. It carried the ball a little bit. Rasha said he hooked me as well, and we're going the other way. A series of violations on Papadopoulos. It, it, he's interesting to watch Nick, navigate in the low post of Papadopoulos. That time, yeah, it was he was hooking right there as Nesterovich. So, 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 so he stepped out of bounds, he hooked him, he carried the ball. <laughs> what was right about yes. that first take? Well, we'll see some right moves by Papadopoulos. He can make plays. Here's Bargnani. Oh, first shot of the game, in and out. Shooting the ball well on this tour right now is Andrea Bargnani. So what do you think about him at the center position? Well, I think it's offensively, while well, he can really stretch it out and score, it's the issues are defense and rebounding. I mean, it, it is clearly, I mean, Bargnani could be physically taken down in the low post. Spencer Haywood in the house, NBA legend. Another turnover on Real Madrid, stuck on Bagel under 10 minutes to go in the first quarter. Anthony Parker fading and hitting. Anthony Parker, back-to-back -back EuroLeague MVP with Maccabi Tel Aviv, helped that great franchise win a couple of EuroLeague championships. And, and these knowledgeable fans in the audience giving him a huge round of applause, appreciating his efforts in the EuroLeague, and he's certainly a well-known player throughout the world right now, Anthony Parker. This is his second year with the Toronto Raptors after a six-year tour of duty overseas. Started his NBA career back in the 90s. Went to college at Bradley. Bargnani. That's his sweet spot, baby. Top of the key for three. The trailer on the break is... He is so effective and effortless. And I love the way he releases the ball so quickly. And again, credit T.J. Ford with the little flip back off the early offense. Charles Smith for three. And he answers. Now I'll give you the dossier on Charles Smith. Went to college in New Mexico from 94 to 97. Drafted in the 97 draft. 26th overall by the Miami Heat. Spent five, time with five NBA teams before finding his niche over here in Europe. Well, third, finding his niche is T.J. Ford early in this game because he's getting in, and that's his third assist so early in this game. And Rosho hits the baseline, Jay. Difficult time containing Pe Ford's penetration ability and vision. Hervel for three. It's long, and the rebound taken by Bargnani. Knocked out of bounds, however, by Lazarus Papadopoulos. And we have an early timeout. The Toronto Raptors off to a great start, and it's because T.J. Ford came to play, as he always does, just underway for Madrid. While we were away, Rasha Nesterovich, another basket for Toronto, and the lead is up to 13-3. Charles Smith, oh, these are big threes right here. They are keeping Real Madrid 
in this basketball game. And you're looking at the Raptors uniforms going, what is different? Well, the Spanish colors have been infused into their regular red uniforms. And obviously, they wore these in the playoffs to try to throw off the New Jersey Nets. The Nets were having none of it. But these are fancy uniforms. I like these. They look pretty sharp, don't they? Incorporating the colors. And it matches up very, very well. But they better match up a little bit better with Charles Smith on the perimeter. But a very good start for the Toronto Raptors. Very sharp on the offensive end. Joey Graham leaning into his guy. Here's DJ to Parker. Down low to Bargnani. Looked like a violation before the shot, and that's exactly right. Well, that's not necessarily his comfort zone yet. It's Andrea Bargnani in the low post area. You see him out around a three-point line where he can just drain shots, but that time a little too anxious off the entry pass from Anthony Parker. He is working on it, though. That he, is a point of emphasis for him. He does not want to be like Dirk. Uh, you know, the outside seven-footer never gets the inside game. He does want the inside game, and he's working towards that. Here's Tim Cherry for three. Well, he probably wants to be like Dirk has been over the last few years, though, and increased his productivity around the basket, making him much more dangerous. TJ is on fire early with the diming, now takes one himself. How about the weapons they have at the point guard position, the Toronto Raptors? Papadopoulos, and one, got the foul on Ross and Esterovich. He's huge, he's a little bit clunky and mechanical, but don't sleep on him at the end of the game. You look at the box score, and there's always numbers for Papadopoulos. Yeah, how about the little veteran clear out, though, as he went up to go up to the basket right there. Kind of like Papadopoulos knows he can't elevate. He flat out has major issues with gravity, this guy, but he can <laughs> find a way, find a way to get it get it to the rim and he's really over the years been known as one of the best back to the basket bigs in the, in the not necessarily the world but certainly in international basketball yeah, yeah. you said it he's not a face-up center he he is a back to the basket dribble two three times to get the move going center because of that because of his lack of athleticism i think he's a guy that although he's been good in international play would struggle in the nba that's why teams have been hesitant about possibly bringing him over capper that's a great point papadopoulos uh, he's mr ulip cup he won it last year with real madrid that's why real is back in the euroleague this year and he won the ulip cup championship a couple years ago with dinamo moscow this is his Actually, I misspoke. This is his first year in Madrid. They won the Ulip Cup last year without him, but he won the Ulip Cup with Dinamo Moscow a couple of years ago, and TJ Ford just keeps it rolling. He's got a flat-out clinic. He's responsible for 15 of the 17 points so far for the Toronto Raptors to start off this game, whether it be with an assist or score. Toronto on top by eight. Just over six minutes to go in the first quarter. Nice speed to Papadopoulos, but he traveled. Sam Mitchell's going to like that. That was an excellent anticipation on the defensive side. The team defense rotating over. That's what forced the travel. I don't think Papadopoulos thought he would see red in front of him when he went up to grab that ball. To Cherry will have a seat. And Raul Lopez, NBA veteran of three years, drafted by the Utah Jazz, 24th overall back in 2001. Second season with Real Madrid. Joey Graham defended well, rebounded by Axel Hervel. And Joey Graham should have known he was de defended that well, and he's better move. Nice feed down low, and the bucket is good. Axel Hervel from Raul Lopez. We talked about the Raptors, and we're certainly going to get into Calderon at the point guard position, but how about the depth of Real Madrid? Not, not certainly the talent level of the Raptors, Ford and Calderon, but you see the shuffle of the feet by Bargnani, but they... Real Madrid gets the same type of energy boost at their level in the early as the Raptors get at the point guard position. Raul Lopez right there. Again, he talked to, he played in the NBA. They have Luis Boak who can come off the bench at the point guard position. And here come the two Spaniards. Jose Calderon, Jorge Garbajosa, say hello. The homecoming of sorts about to happen at the next dead ball. And here is Charles Smith. Oh, he wanted a reverse dunk on Rosho right there. He was cut off. Gets it back, and he's fouled. Anthony Parker got him. And Charles Smith, couple of threes, now attacking the basket. And here are Calderon and Garbajosa. What a timeout. So we'll see them on the other side of this break. Wow, I'm teased. We got Calderon and Garbajosa from Spain on NBA TV. What could be better than that? The NBA Europe Live Tour 2007 presented by EA Sports resumes on NBA TV. And at long last, Garbo Hosea and Calderon on the floor. We get to talk about it. 
Jose Calderon, arguably the best point guard off the bench in the NBA. T.J. Ford will get a rest. And Jorge Garbajosa, he's the dude with all the hair right there. He's going to be the guy diving on the floor for loose balls. He's going to be the guy taking charges. He's the dirty work guy on this Toronto Raptor team and on the Spanish national team. And one of the most popular players. You know, they do popularity contests in throughout the EuroLeague. And year in and year out when Jorge Garbajosa was there, he was considered one of the most well-known and well-respected players in all the league. And a perfect blue guy in addition for the Raptors last season and this season. And... With all due respect to you and your club, the New Jersey Nets, if you don't know, Tim Capstraw calls the game on radio with Chris Carino during the regular season. But I think the Toronto Raptors beat your New Jersey Nets if A, Barniani doesn't suffer the appendectomy and go into the playoffs lame, and if Jorge Garbajosa, who didn't play at all in the playoffs, was healthy. Because I think without those two guys at 100%, that really put them behind the eight ball against the Nets. Made a big difference. And, and really, I think a, a lot of people talked about Barniani and just coming back, but I don't know if enough people talked about Garbajosa and how important he was to the Raptors, and, and especially on this side of the floor with his ability to defend. And I think the term glue guy really pertains to Jorge Garbajosa. There's Bullock right there. Lewis Bullock, you remember him from Michigan days. And again, the multitude, the three point guards that the Real Madrid can do. So we're seeing a lot of, get your roster ready for keep track of the point guards in this game. This is one of the elite franchises in the EuroLeague. And, oh, that's a nice tap in by Axel Hervel. The O board and the bucket and Real Madrid within four. You see the athletic ability of Hervel right there. Just that they ran a lot back, Pat cut, lob to him, and then the quick second jump leaping. Jason Capono into the game and he hits it. So you're saying you're saying, hey, that wasn't a three. Leader in three-point shooting last year, 51%. Well, the craftiness that time remained composed and balanced and was able to knock that down. You're right, Capono, he, he can drain him from behind the arc. One of the best strokes in the NBA, a quick release and Raul Lopez down to the floor but could not be saved by Papadopoulos so the Raps get it back, up six. Active hands off that high screen and roll that time. We talked about it prior to this game, Rick. Without Chris Bosch on the floor, we've seen a lot of these games be very close between the and this Europe Live competition. And this really has the makings of that. I mean, Toronto came out very strong, but you knew Real Madrid would answer, and they have. Well, the first three games played between NBA and EuroLeague teams. Garbajosa from the baseline. Uh, the first NBA three NBA EuroLeague games very very close. Now the game we had before this Memphis against MMT Estudiantes was a blowout, but Estudiantes not a EuroLeague team. So we expect this one to be close with Real Madrid, like I said, being one of the elite teams in the EuroLeague and one of the reasons why Raul Lopez for three. Giving some good energy off the bench and scoring ability. See both of these teams effective with their offense over the last few minutes moving the basketball. Capona Garbajosa. Garbo couldn't get the roll here in his homeland. How about that? Back comes Madrid, down five, over three minutes to go in the first quarter. Charles Smith made a bid for his third three of the first quarter. Pulled away by Garbajosa. Well, the Raptors without Bosch, but remember last year, Bosch had foot problems and knee problems, and they had to spend some time playing without him last season also. And because, because they shoot the ball so effectively from the outside, we're still able to play well. Oh, Rasha faded right there. Missed horribly. And the eight-footer went six. Jose Calderon guarding Lopez here. Fourth in assist to turnover ratio last year. And he and TJ were so good. Second in the NBA in turnovers. The only team better in terms of taking care of the ball was the Detroit Pistons. Charles Smith. Out of bounds, and back to the wraps. 2.26 to go in the first quarter. Now Charles Smith, obviously the offensive firepower guy for Real Madrid. He came out smoking, knocking down a couple of threes. But that time, a little ill-advised. That was very much a contested deep jump shot. There's the ball movement prior. Capono to Garbajosa. Jorge Garbajosa, Jose Calderon here in Spain. And the Spaniard, Raul Lopez, saying, I can hang as well. I played three years in the NBA. We got a good one from Madrid on the Chris Bosch injury. He's got a sore knee, didn't practice on Tuesday. Questionable for this game. It's a tweaked knee is what they're calling it. Bosch said, and I quote, I have to rest it. I would like to practice, but I have to think about the big picture. No disrespect to the teams we're playing, but it is the preseason. And coming off the Atlantic Division Championship and the big goals that this team has, Chris Bosch just can't risk it here in a friendly in Spain. Garbajosa on 
friendly to the home crowd with that one, with the exception of the fact that they want to see their boys do well. They sure do. Right there, absolutely no hesitation by Jorge Garbosa. And, you know, we've seen him throughout the years. That's something he can do and probably do a little bit more for the Raptors this season to shoot the three. Back door. Bucket. Nice finish. Michaelis Pelicanos, the Greek, the, Greek uh, the player from Greece. And he was in the starting lineup. A couple of Greeks in the starting lineup here. Papadopoulos and Pelicanos. Calderon fouled on his way to the cup. But shooters on the floor like the Raptors have and the penetration opportunities for a guy like Calderon are right there. The defense had to be stretched out. He disregarded the high screen and roll, put a lot of pressure on that guy, Raul Lopez. First foul on him, fourth on the team. Papadopoulos will have a seat. He looks to be in better shape, Capper. I mean, he can at times be a little doughy. I mean, there's no stomach there at all. He looks like he's in great shape. He does. Looks in put together ready for a productive season here's the one thing now this is different because it's preseason but sometimes when you have that type of talent at the point guard position that sam mitchell has think about this game rick in that tj ford came out he was a dominant player on the floor sometimes you can because you want to get that other guy on the floor actually take the rhythm out of your guy that's having a good game going I totally understand what you're saying, but this is not a great example because it's exhibition time. Oh, tapped in from the weak side. A host of Real Madrid players were there. The point I want to make is this. Sam Mitchell has a rotation with Ford and Calderon. It's about 30 minutes uh, for TJ and you know roughly 18 to 20 for Calderon. And obviously, give or take two, three, four minutes here. Late first quarter, doesn't matter. Ford's out, Calderon is in. And, and then he starts the second quarter, and then TJ comes in late first half. That's just the way they do it. They did it all last year. They did it in Rome against Lodomatic Roma, and they're doing it here. So that's just the way Sam Mitchell deploys his point guard. Well, you know, and I think his philosophy is, and, and I think it's smart, because my initial reaction would be, hey, don't ever take a guy out when he's on that, when he's got a good game going. But I think it's important that you have to have big pictures. We look at Kenny Smith right there, and a guy that would understand this point guard situation, and that say, well, over an 82 game season, I got to make sure both these guys understand the rules. So I can't get too up and down on, on, a, on a few minutes of quality play. And Calderon is just too good to keep on the bench. And I understand if TJ's got a rolling, but. And, and, and Jose isn't the kind of guy to go to the papers and pout about lack of minutes and lack of touches, but, you know, you do have to keep him happy. You have two fantastic point guards, and you just you got to find a way to play them both. Well, he's going to be a free agent after this season, and, and Brian Colangelo, the GM of the Raptors, says he gets the guy he gets called the most about is Jose Calderon, and you can understand why. He said no all summer to trade requests for Jose Calderon, and the follow is good. A lot of guys going after the ball and not putting a body on Real Madrid. Real Madrid has hurt the Raptors on the offensive glass in this first quarter. That's their third second chance opportunity. Pelicanos again putting that one in. 26-year-old Greek forward. Carbajosa tries again for three. Short with that one. Tap out. And it's saved by Calderon. Raptors by six. About a one and a half second difference between the shot and game clocks. Calderon's really good when he can get going downhill off the high screen and roll. It's probably what he'll get right now. Bullock knows it defensively. That was defended well. Garbajosa down low. Chris Humphreys took a shot, pulled his way up, and drew a foul with 4.9 to go in the first quarter. So we're going to look at Chris Humphreys. There is Chris Bosch, and Humphreys obviously playing a lot earlier in this game than he normally would because one of our favorite players and favorite guys, Chris Bosch, is in civvies for this one. It's not serious. They just say he's got a knee tweak, and they're being uh, extra cautious with that. Obviously, they need him for 82 this year. We talked about the depth that the Raptors have at the point guard, even on the wings, but you have to question, do they have enough good big size up front in case they have some injury issues? And Humphreys is a guy. you got Maceo Basson. you got Garbajosa. But Nesterovic, not a ton of, not, not, not really those guys in its 6'10 to 7-foot range. That, that are qual what you'd call quality bigs. Although Garbajosa is a guy, but he's a smaller big. Exactly. And it's not like you have, you know, a Paul Millsap in Utah. Millsap is ready to start right now. But you have Boozer in front of him. But if Boozer were to go down, and Boozer's not with the Jazz right now, by the way. Uh, his son, Carmani, uh, just went under a bone, uh, bone marrow transplant procedure. So our best to the Boozer family. We hope everything goes okay with that. But closing seconds, first quarter, Lewis Bullock tried to dazzle the crowd 
in the final seconds, but that buzzer beater was not meant to be. So we are through one in Madrid. The Toronto Raptors with the lead over Johan Plaza's Real Madrid squad. The second quarter is next. 29 points for the Toronto Raptors in the first quarter. Real Madrid put up 22. We are live from the Palacio de Deportes in Madrid, Spain. Raptors Real Madrid. It's the NBA Europe Live Tour presented by EA Sports. Camel Cabstra, happy to have you with us. Carlos Delfino, the laid back Argentine. And the talk has been that Mitchell loves this game. Sam Mitchell, Rennie Coach of the Year, but he lacks the fire that Sam Mitchell likes in his players. And Sam is saying that he's going to have to adjust to Delfino's laid back style. But if Delfino keeps producing, he's going to like him regardless. Well, he's, he says he's laid back in his personality, but not necessarily on the way he plays the game. And he can defend. You saw him protect against that backdoor cut right there. Carlos Delfino was a major player for Argentina in winning silver at the FIBA Americas and gaining that automatic berth in the 2008 Beijing Summer Games. Here's Humphreys, and he scores. Chris Humphreys out of Minnesota, born in Minneapolis, drafted in 2004 by Utah, 14th overall, and then traded to Toronto straight up for Rafael Arujo. That was an impressive back-to-the-basket move right there by Chris Humphreys. Again, without Boss on the floor, knows he can be a go-to guy and display some of that offensive capability. That was Alex Mumbrew, member of the Spanish national team, with a take he'd like to forget. Calderon turns it over. Raul Lopez sniped him. Numbers for Madrid. Wow. Back come, I'm sorry, Tim. Back come the Raptors up nine. Garbajosa goes reverse and scores. They're up 11. Jorge Garbajosa looking at the offensive end in this game. He sure is. That time on the wing, seeing that Real Madrid was relaxing, and Garbajosa took advantage. Madrid not getting back. Pono working hard. Delfino working hard defensively. Got the trap on the side. And a bleep bullet dribbled out of bounds. Oh, they got a foul on uh, Carlos Delfino. He's laid back, but he does not agree with that call right there. I thought Bullock stepped out of bounds. Looked that way. They had him in a precarious position over there. Very good move by Garbajosa to think double team. Back screen trying to post up Hamilton. And another foul on Toronto. That one's on Chris Humphreys. Packed house here at the Palacio de Deportes in Madrid. And how about that new arena, the O2 Arena in London, where yesterday on ESPN2, the Boston Celtics defeated the Minnesota Timberwolves, a state-of-the-art NBA-style arena. And Ray Allen said after the game, in terms of the crowd, in terms of the court, in terms of the arena, it had everything that the NBA would normally have. He said he felt like he was in an NBA arena and of course, the 2012 Summer Olympic Games will be held in London. And it's no wonder, Tim, that the British national team, headlined right now by Luol Deng, is getting it fired up. They want, they're going to be the host country, so they got to get that national program on the rise. Ben Gordon, where are you, bro? <laughs> Let's start playing with the Brits on that national team. Capono from the corner. There's Lopez transition reading it. Gordon's got to get his contract figured out with the Bulls before he can start thinking about international play. I'm thinking about a dunk. Look out at Sekulic. Breakdown defensively. A lot of Raptors going the other way. You know I love spending other people's money, right? I think the Bulls just need to throw millions at Deng and Gordon and be done with it. Lock him up. There's Humphreys again. He's going to try to make another back to the double team that time. Humphreys had it knocked away. Mumbrou for three. Used to hit rim that time. Raptors in need of a good quality possession right now. Again, you don't have that guy, Chris Bosch, who you can play through. You get used to with that comfort zone of having him. Good feed by Calderon. Uh, Humphreys just couldn't finish. Calderon is crafty, isn't he? He has his head up, too, when he's moving around. That pass by Humphreys picked off. And a nice move. Cutting back and scoring. Blagada Sekulic out of Montenegro. And you get the defense running back and 
Good to Z him a little bit, put a little pressure on him. That time they can't stay in front. Excellent job. Calderon hasn't been able to get into the paint. Will he get there now? The kick out to Capono, put it on the boo. I spoke too soon. A wide open J from Capono missed. And this is Lewis Bullock. Hey, he nails it. And we got a four point game 33 29 Toronto. You see that Real Madrid loves that three point line. They like to utilize it. That's their fourth make so far. They will not stop shooting. And Sam Mitchell wants to remind his players to get back and contest shots behind the arc. Well, it was not a good sequence in the last few possessions for the Toronto Raptors. And Sam wants to talk it over Madrid on a 7-0 run. We're here in Madrid, Spain as the NBA Europe Live Tour 2007 presented by EA Sports continues. And Real Madrid, it was, I believe, a 9-0 run for Toronto to start the game. But Raul Lopez got into the game. Some of the reserves from Madrid got into the game. And they have turned the game in their favor. They still trail by four. But we very much have a ball game at this point. And a foul out high. Given by Blagada Sekulic on Jorge Garbajosa. When the Raptors were having success early in this game, Rick, they were able to penetrate the basketball. T.J. Ford was very effective, whether it be in transition or in the half court, at getting into the paint and then drawing secondary defenders to free up guys. It's probably the same type of attitude Calderon should have right now. Credit to Seri with doing a good job defensively, but Capono can really shoot. Amazingly, 51% from three last year, 49% overall. And he was rarely guarded last year on that Miami Heat team with Shaq and Wade. Yeah, will he get the same sort of look? So get him in a different manner because they don't have the low post presence, but the drive and kicks will be there. Nice move. Back to the basket, spinning and scoring. And we're back to a four-point game. You can see Real Madrid. You understand their history and why they've had success year in and year out. They get talented players. Jose out to Capono. The escape dribble, and it's long. Starting point guard back into the game, playing with dual point guards with Bullock now. Bullock got the tweet, could not get the end one. Sweet Lou to the line, 31-year-old American. He was drafted by my Timberwolves as Mike Miller, who just won with the Grizzlies in the earlier game, checking out the action. And Mike Miller is just a gym rat, isn't he? He's like, if there's a game going on, I just want to be a part of it, whether I'm playing or watching. And that was a sweet move right there by Alex Mumbrew who's picking up his game, got a really bad start to this game, but now he's trying to settle in, he's playing an NBA team, I get that, but now a nice move right there, and Bullock at the line. Well, that's what Mumbrough should be doing, taking the ball at the basket more. He was settling and did not look comfortable at all from the perimeter. Bullock on the catch that time, putting pressure on Delfino, is a capable defender. With the quickness of Lewis Bullock. He was drafted by the Wolves, 42nd overall back in 1999. And his rights were traded to the Orlando Magic. So here is the situation that we were talking about. Midway through the second, you know, after about a, maybe a nine-minute stint on the court for Calderon. Now T.J. Ford's back into the game. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter the score, who's hot, who's what. Sam Mitchell just has his pattern with his point guards, and that's how it goes. Let's see if Ford can dominate like he did in the early going. Kinsari with a defensive, different defensive approach now, trying to pick him up full. Bargnani back on the floor. He was effective in the early going of the recipient of some of those good forward passes. Give him the space to just penetrate again, T.J. Ford. He was really giving it the Real Madrid team fits defensively. Joey Graham got the start in this one. Back in it. Five on the shot clock. Joey Graham navigating his way to the hoop. And he was looking for a foul. None coming. Back comes Real Madrid. Down two. Knifing to the hoop is Mumbru. And Blagata couldn't score. Taken away by the Raptors. TJ Ford harassed. And Bargnani restores order. TJ did whatever he wanted early in the first quarter. Now in and doing it again. Picking up right where he left off. That high screen off to the side that's called a hat pick over there. And, and a TJ Ford can just navigate and find a way. And 
Boy, that time they predicted he would pass the ball, so everybody backed off and he made him pay by scoring. Lewis Bullock, speaking of scoring, hitting a two right there. Back to a two-point game, under six minutes to go in the first half. Well, Bullock wants to remind people that, yes, he was drafted in the NBA, and a little something to prove from Stone, he's still got a game. Joey Graham followed up his miss, trying again, and scoring, and he was not to be denied that time. Big year for Joey Graham, right? Third year now, there's a lot of competition at the wing position. He has the athletic ability, wow. Nice cut to the hoop, and the payoff right there for Blagata Sekulic, who has been real nice off the bench. Karim Kunzeri just anticipating where the player would be off the roll and making a perfect delivery. And is Sam Mitchell working his team, or what? Joey Graham Look to turn a right ankle right there. He's flexing it, but a lot of timeouts in this first quarter and first half by Sam Mitchell, who has a lot of work to do with his Toronto Raptors. Don't look to win 50 this year after 47 a year ago. Rasha Nesterovic, Andrea Barnani ready to come back in. Raptors, Real Madrid, Pamela Capstra on the call for NBA TV. And there's the reigning coach of the year, winner of the Red Auerbach Trophy a year ago, and well-deserved, Tim. He did an excellent job, I mean, no doubt about it. The Raptors did not start the season last year strong, and, and he really kept them together. He found a nucleus, he started in playing, giving Bargnani more minutes, he found a way to utilize both these talented point guards, got some good chemistry going, and they, they really shot the ball very, very well. He's got a challenge in this game, he's got to play without his star, Chris Bosch. And it's still early in the training camp. The competitiveness of Sam Mitchell, though, the reason why he stayed in the NBA so long as a player, certainly evident in his coaching style also. T.J. Ford, Rosho. Luke Jackson, number six into the game. He just passed it to Barnani, who turns it over again. And how about Sam Mitchell? really on the hot seat all year. I mean, all the speculation was this is going to be his last year, is going to bring in his guy, and all he did was direct his team through a lot of adversity to 47 wins, the Atlantic Division Championship, and didn't give Colangelo a choice. Got to bring the guy back at that point. He earned it. Absolutely, and it was a lot of new faces and a lot of different, different players from different different places all around the world. What, they have nine new players last year? Well, could, you know, give uh, congratulate Colangelo with finding and understanding the importance and how good European players can be. But to your right, Sam Mitchell had to put that whole thing together and keep it together. By the way, Brian Colangelo uh, won his second Exec of the Year award in three years. Won one with Phoenix uh, three years ago. Last year, won exec Executive of the Year with the Toronto Raptors. Luke Jackson with some good defense that time on Mumbro with another force. Boy, they're really trying to do a much better job of containing T.J. Ford, Real Madrid. There is T.J. And we were talking off air. We might as well bring it to the air. You, you were wondering how much do, you know, T.J. and Jose play together. We talked about the rotation patterns in terms of their playing time. The last year called around average 21 minutes a game. T.J. Ford averaged 30 minutes a game. That's 51. It's 48 in a game. That's three minutes per game that they played together. And that's not very much. Basically, they're not out there together. They don't go with the two-point guard look very often. And T.J., despite just 29.9 minutes a game, had career highs last year in points 14, assists 7.9, and field goal percentage at 44. Foul on Pablo Aguiar. Like that play right there by Andrea Bargnani. The stagnant, the, the Raptor offense had been stagnant for a while. They hadn't gotten good looks, but on the catch that time, decided to be aggressive and get himself right here. He get his team out of a little bit of a slump right now by going strong to the basket. I think offensively, I think he's really developing a more aggressive attitude in his game. I don't think his back to the basket game is right to where, where it has to be to have success, but he does want to go to the basket, doesn't avoid contact. It's the defensive interior and also the rebounding, again, that he has to step up and improve on. Sergey Yule, the point guard 23, has done a better job defensively since he's entered the game for Real Madrid. Nice take by Lewis Bullock, and he drew a foul on his way. Anthony Parker, the guilty party, his second foul of the game, fourth team foul in the second quarter. When you play dual point guards like Real Madrid is, though, I mean, you give up something because you don't necessarily have size on the defensive end. 
but you're very difficult to guard off the dribble. And you see that that's what Real Madrid is doing right now, and something we've discussed that maybe the Raptors will do some in this season. Lewis Bullock at the free throw line. And let's get back to Bargnani for a second. You all know he's born in Rome. You know he's the first European ever taken number one overall in the NBA draft. But did you know that he's the elder of two boys? His parents were divorced at age 13. And he is a very tough-minded player. And last year, at the beginning of his rookie year, when things weren't going well, Sam Mitchell set up a drill in a health club where basically his bigs fought for the ball. It wasn't basketball, not trying to score, just get the loose ball. And basically that drill was credited with turning around Bargnani's season. He played with more toughness. The very next game after that drill had 15 points, and the rest is history. He ended up second in Rookie of the Year voting last year, and here he is going to work in the post, scoring and one style. Who said he doesn't have a back-to-the-basket game? <laughs> and who's got better timing than you? Excellent job talking about and promoting Andrea Bargnani's toughness and physical play, how he matured last season, and right on cue, gets the ball on the block. And Rick Camley, you made the call right there on a strong physical move by Bargnani. Again, he's got to be featured now. There's no, there's not Bosch to go to right now. This could be very good for the Raptors to, to work on Bargnani. Hey, no, it's your turn now. Get on the block when you're playing with Rosho and Nesterovic. We want you to improve that. What a steal. T.J. Ford with Parker. T.J., the ball fake. Oh, what a shot by T.J. Ford. Hanging and hitting, plus the foul. Even he enjoyed that one. A little smile right there, the quickness of the hands and TJ Ford and he's the other way. He's giving the impression he's gonna make the pass. Wasn't there after contact, still being able to finish. And transition is where TJ Ford flourishes. That was sweet, man, that was good. Two fouls now on Bullock. And TJ Ford, he's looked fantastic. In the first game against Boston, 15 points, five assists in just 25 minutes. And he had eight points and five assists in 25 minutes in game two. That in Rome this past Sunday. So TJ Ford gives the Raptors a 46-39 advantage. Under four minutes to go in the first half. Charles Smith, two threes early in this game. Now driving. Under 10 on the shot clock. And nice rebound right there by Harvell over Luke Jackson. Blue. For threes, put in for defensive purposes and a uplifting three towards the end of the first half. How many times do you see that off of offensive rebounds? The defense is all distorted and you can kick out and find a, a shooter at the three-point line. Sergio Lull, they have three point guards on this team. They're all good. And here's Bargnani for three. And that was from Rome, baby. <laughs> and it's effortless from wherever he shoots the basketball. He holds the ball really high on the catch, too. The amount of movement in his shot is really uh, minute compared to com uh, other guys who shoot the basketball. Very good point. No wasted motion at all. And Lewis Bullock, is he a shot maker or what? Right. Should throw that up after the whistle. That horse shot almost went down. He's a playmaker who's causing problems with the Raptor defense right now and getting the Raptors in a foul Paul predicament that Sam Mitchell wants to talk about in this time. This whole thing is presented by EA Sports, so why not bring you the NBA Live 08 go-to move of the first half. It is Raul Lopez, little drop-off, and Blagada Sekunic. That's alphabet soup right there, baby, for two. <laughs> Lopez played in Utah for the Jazz for a while. The drop-off pass to the miscue. Lopez keeping presence of mind. Got some talent on Real Madrid, and the Raptors mm -hmm. know they're in for a ball game. No doubt about that, my friend. Sekulic and Lopez and this guy, Bullock, have been real, real strong off the bench. And thus, Madrid has gotten back into this game because the Rap starters against the Madrid starters, that was heavily in favor of Toronto. Bullock hits the first. Fourth year here with Real Madrid. One of those guys, you know, you get situated and you have a great situation playing in Europe. Do you want to ever try to get back and be an NBA backup? No, it's probably a better quality of life once you get established and, and, and get yourself set. He said he's his fourth year here, so he certainly has established roots in, in Madrid. Juan Dixon with the rock into the game for Toronto, and he frees himself and knocks it down. Juan Dixon out of Baltimore, Maryland, and traded 
straight up for Fred Jones last year. Toronto happy to have him. Just another answer off the bench for the Raptors. Here's Lull for three. Cannot do it again. Nice rebound by Bargnani. He and Hervel were right there, and Bargnani snatched it. And it did what you're right. It wasn't coming to him. It went to the other side of the basket to attack it. Foul on Lull trying to guard T.J. Ford, and he's saying, y'all can't stop me. Sometimes you just get annoyed, you know? It just gets frustrating. You're hustling. You're trying to keep him in front. Sergey Yule has done a better job. If this is a, the fourth different player as Ford kind of goes by, but contact was made before the hook. T.J. hits the first. T.J. Ford, born in Houston, Texas. And at Texas, in one of my favorite American cities, Austin, back in 2003, won the Naismith and Wooden Awards for College Player of the Year. How about that? And he was drafted eighth overall by the Bucks in 2003. And last summer, traded one for one for Charlie Villanueva, a move I loved for the Raptors. I got ripped for that. The Raptors got ripped for that. You don't trade a big for a small. Yeah, you do when it's a four for a one. Juan Dixon hanging. Nice defense, but it's put back up and in by Luke Jackson for the Toronto Raptors. Good job by Jackson, not assuming that play would go down. But the other thing about T.J. Ford, overcoming that significant injury that he had, that more than significant injury. Boy, that, that, was, that was scary. Now it's been a couple of years. He appears obviously to be 100%. No doubt about that. And one for Madrid. Charles Smith, a strong move. He'll go back to the line. He had two new school threes early in the game. Now trying to get an old school three from the line. And I want to talk more about Ford and the spinal stenosis. He missed the entire season of 04, 05. And three years in Milwaukee. Uh, played very well as a rookie. Then missed that middle year. Then played a year. And then was traded to Toronto. And as we said, last year had a career year numbers-wise. And successfully with his team as well with 47 wins. And a turnover on Toronto. Gives it back to Real Madrid. And Charles Smith took a shot to the mouth. Another look at it right uh -oh. there. Ooh. That is elbow meeting teeth. Let's hope all the chicklets are still in there, huh? Yeah. Count them. Charles will have a seat. Yoan Plaza has that look on his face like, hmm, where do I go to replace him? Certainly the most potent scorer is Charles Smith in this game right now. The ability to shoot the three from deep is taken. Some Raptor players off the bounce. Well, that, that's good news right there. I mean, if it's just a fat lip, hey, we, we, we've all had one of those. It's painful, but it goes away soon. I mean, having a tooth or two knocked out, that's a obviously a much bigger deal. Nothing dirty about that. Did he get him with both elbows? One was enough. <laughs> Charles Smith says, could you get somebody else guarding me? Hervel tried to feed Papadopoulos. Somehow came back to Lazarus. Lull, another three. Oh, it's good! Right in T.J. Ford's eye! We like the way Sergei Yule has looked on both sides of the floor, aggressive defensively and knocking down threes. There's Ford again. Oh, blocked by Papadopoulos! And Lull gets the rebound. Nice dribble move, and back he comes. Down five. Oh, the no look! Oh, it's rejected by Andrea Bargnani! We're only in the preseason, but they're balling in Madrid. <laughs> they're going up and down, and Rick Camel loves it. Papadopoulos can do a lot. He's not known as a shot blocker then on the other end. Bargnani says, I will reject also. <laughs> Papadopoulos got that with his fingertips. Ervel says, I'm not taking it to Bargnani. I'm going away with the hook shot, and he scores. The bouncy Axel Ervel doing it on the glass, and that time, the pivot move. Oh, look at TJ. Missed that layup, but wow, was that nice getting to the rim. Back comes Real Madrid, a little behind his back, goes high, can't score. And it's tapped out of bounds off of Papadopoulos. It'll go back to the Raptors with 38 and change to go. Do you like a windshield wiper game or what? Boy, you love to see it go up and down. This is my style. They're in the 50s already. They're on pace for 100 <laughs> each. Keep it up, fellas. Keep it up. And oh, Lowe will have a seed. What a spark he gave his team off the bench. Look at Papadopoulos picking up T.J. Ford. Into the corner for Dixon. He was hit on that shot. No call. And back comes Madrid. About a five-second difference in the clocks. 
the way this first half has been played, I don't think that's going to matter. Smith, oh, he hits his third three of the first half, and we're tied at 54. Well, excellent job by Real Madrid closing out this first half of play. The momentum psychologically feeling good about themselves going into the half. And one more possession for T.J. Ford. Down to seven. Shot clock turned off. T.J. gets the screen from Rosho. Papadopoulos. Oh, he left Rosho, and Rosho pounds it down. Two-point lead for Toronto with 1.3 to go. Heady, heady play by Ford. Here's the shot from beyond half court. It won't go. Awesome. First half from Madrid. 56-54. The Toronto Raptors lead Real Madrid here on Madrid's home. Thanks to a dunk by Rosho Nesterovic right at the end there. And, uh, boy, as they were calling it, Back and forth to end that first <laughs> half. The point guards are going nutso. The, everybody that gets a ball is taking a shot. Three-point shots flying at an entertaining end of the first half. Giving the number five spot, the starting center spot to Andrea Bargnani, he's not necessarily giving it up just nope. yet. Back to the game. Third As you can see, Madrid a plus five in the second quarter over Toronto. Bargnani short with that one. And they let it go out of bounds. Rick Hamlet, Tim Capstra on the call. We're live from the Palacio de Deportes in Madrid. It's Calderon looking on. Ford got into the paint like he did in the beginning of the game, trying to set up Bargnani. I was going to say it was a little bit out of his range, but I don't think you can say that about Bargnani. Papadopoulos fumbled it away to Anthony Parker. I agree with you. I think inside the timeline with that stroke of his, <laughs> not a bad shot. Hervel on Bargnani, he could call right there. That was a flop. Axel Hervel says, wait a minute, I always get that call. No, we have NBA officials on the court, Axel. You agree, right? That was a flop? Yeah, got in his way right there. I'll take that right there. But it was a disorganized possession that time. That was unnecessary. He had Bargnani on a tough situation. Good. Ford in the paint again, but was able to, unable to find Bargnani that time. Jorge Garbajosa does not own a razor. I have <laughs> never seen him clean shaven, and I love that about him. He, stri he's a, he strikes me as a guy who's not really worried about what he's wearing or how he looks. He just wants to win basketball games. And the first shot of the second half is good for Real Madrid, and they tie the game at 56, and it is... Okay, I thought we were going to get a turnover there. Toronto will get it back. Charles Smith knocking down a shot. Extended pressure right now. Full court. Bullock on the floor. Excuse me, that was Bullock that knocked down that previous shot. And a foul. Papadopoulos against Rosho Nesterovic. That is a couple of huge human beings going to work in the post right there. Steel cage match down low. If you paid, I'd watch. <laughs> Here's Rasha. Papadopoulos on his back. Rasha going baseline. Taking an offensive foul on Rasha to Sterevich. Going back and forth that time. Sterevich has got to be a little bit more decisive. When he has that much time, got to make a quick, decisive move. A lot of bouncing going on. Again, the hook. Both these guys trying to hook each other. Certainly the first ones to tell the official, I think, why guy defending. Rasha entering his. 10th season in the NBA. He knows better than that. You can't hook him. They're going to call it every time. Into the corner. Pelicanos could not get the roll. Papadopoulos keeping it alive and Rasha Nesterovic there as well off the big Greek center. Aside from the beginning of this game, Rick, I mean, Real Madrid, I mean, they got themselves in a deep hole down 13-3 to to the Raptors. They have really played well. TJ looked to be fouled right there. Rasho cleans up the mess and gives the Raptors a 58-56 lead. Whenever you go in a game against the Toronto Raptors, one of the key components of your scouting report is how are you going to keep TJ Ford out of the lane on those type of plays? It's difficult. Bullock ties it up at 58. Sweet Lou, starting the second half, did not start the game, and... Uh, He's got two quick baskets. When you put, when you play the way he did, remember he had 11 first half points. He's got 13 now. TJ Ford, you go, you go around the screen, he'll beat you. Turn the corner, you go underneath, and can knock down the, the deep shot. That's what happened right there. TJ and Bullock. 
own little game here. Wraps back up by two. Herbal trying to give Real Madrid the lead, and it's rebounded by Graham. Offensive foul on Andrea Bargnani. A little swim move right there. A backstroke, if you will. And Axel Alvaro is selling it well. Sam Mitchell not liking what he's seen. Since the beginning of this game, the Raptors have lost some energy. He's in for a tough game because Real Madrid is, is for real in their ability to play. And without Bosch, this is a challenge. Ball movement. Excellent. Into the corner for Pelicanos. Can't cash in. Rebound Rosho. Almost threw it away. Boy, that was a risky pass in traffic right there from Rosho. Yeah, you got to find TJ Ford. Parker. Oh, what a dive to Rosho who tried to go reverse. And that was surreal. Seeing Rosho Nesterovic galloping through the paint trying to go reverse layup. But what a find by Parker. It's a beautiful pass right there by Anthony Parker. But what he'd like to see Rosho Nesterovic do on that play is go right to the rim and look to dunk the basketball. You would get the contact, you'd end up on the free throw line, and you don't want that kind of soft stuff going at the basket. You want to be physical off that type of delivery. I was having a flashback, you know, the Anthony Parker, Nikola Vujicic connection with Maccabi Tel Aviv that won a couple of championships for that great team. And Rosho. At the line, first five years with Minnesota, then three years with San Antonio, won a championship with them in 2005. Now in his second year with the Toronto Raptors. We talked about the depth at the wing for the Raptors, but I think it would be a major mistake to cut any of the minutes of Anthony Parker that he can play on the bat. I think he does too many little things well and big things to keep him off the floor. He has pride on his defense. Look at him trying to check Bullock right now. Bullock shoots over him. The heat check shot wouldn't go. I totally agree. Anthony Parker, one of the best all-around players in the Eastern Conference. Rosho, nice catch, kept it high, and he scored 44% from three-point range last year for Anthony Parker. Plays uh, sticky D. I'm not going to say shutdown D, but I agree. I would not play Delfino or Capono over Anthony Parker. Papadopoulos. Things working together. We saw some clever assist. Axel Lavelle that time to Papadopoulos. On the other end, Ford with his eighth assist of the game. Wraps up three with the ball. Under eight minutes to go in the third quarter. TJ Ford was defended very well. And the loose ball comes to Hervel. Back comes Real Madrid. Lewis Bullock gets it back. Open three. Tie game. Both these teams like to push the pace in transition and have the capability of knocking down threes. That time, Lewis Bullock wasn't located, and he is having a heck of a game right now. 15 points off the bench. TJ feeds Parker. Nice pass to Bargnani. Bargnani's off in this game. And that rebound comes to Karim Tuncheri. Chance for Real Madrid to take the lead. Three-point shooting by Real Madrid, really utilizing that weapon, and that's something the Raptors love to use. Pelicano rebounded by Herval, and he draws a foul on the Raptors. He just slithers through there. Tim, there were four red jerseys, and the one bouncy guy, as you said, in white, comes away with that rebound. He has been tipping and making plays around the rim all game long, and that's Axel Herval's game. Athletic, he competes, he plays hard. The Denver Nuggets, they drafted him in the second round of the 2005 draft at 52, and I'm certainly watching this game closely to see if he can make a contribution. And here's Herval. That was saved by Bullock. Yeah, he saved it in there. I thought that was going out of bounds off of Toronto, but Bullock not taking any chances. Pincherry turns the corner. Pelicanos for three. Oh, yeah, it's good. 66-63, Real Madrid, their first lead in a long, long time. Ninth three of the game, and the Raptors are seeing a lot of their own medicine coming back at them with the way that Real Madrid is utilizing that line. Crowd getting into it now, getting behind their home team, Real Madrid. Bargnani. Oh, he had that look. Too aggressive. To Cherry. Back to Pelicanos and one. Another three-point play for Michaelis. Pelicanos, the Greek forward, get him to the line and a chance to give Real Madrid a six-point lead. Excellent transition play right there. The give back by Tunceri. 
excellent job moving the basketball, and T.J. Ford was an, unable to defend that type of two-on-one execution. And who should the Raptors find themselves down six. Well, who's the calming influence you want to go to when you're in trouble right now? Ori Garbajosa comes into the game. Remember, you don't have you don't have Chris Bosch to run some plays through. My mistake. They're down five. 68-63. Pelicanos missed that and one free throw. Here's Capono from the elbow. He's been off this game as well. Here's Bullock. He's right on a 10-0 run. And he draws the foul. Boy, they are keeping the pedal to the metal. They're giving the Toronto Raptors a taste of their own medicine, and Toronto doesn't like it one bit. Yeah, and, and this guy, Lewis Bullock, whether it be scoring on the perimeter or putting pressure on the Raptor defense with his penetration ability, he has been excellent. He gave him a huge boost off the bench, and Real Madrid has been able to benefit and build from that moment momentum. For the Raptors and Real Madrid, Three-point shooting for Real Madrid has been the story. Only six attempts from downtown by Toronto. Six more overall field goal attempts by Real Madrid. Why The Raptors like hitting threes and taking threes. Why only six attempts? Well, it, has, it goes back a lot to Chris Bosh not being on the floor, not attracting any kind of double-team attention, and also the job that the Real, Real Madrid has done off the pick-and-roll game of the Raptors. They've stayed at home and put a lot of pressure on the individual that takes the ball off the bounce to make a play. 46-34 Real Madrid since the start of the second quarter. And thus they're up five. 5.35 to go in the third quarter. And the Toronto Raptors and Andrea Bargnani in red. Real Madrid in white. Jose Calderon back into the game for the Toronto Raptors. And Sam Mitchell looking for a little zip off the bench. Now let me ask you a question. You just had a timeout. Why wasn't Calderon in the game right out of the timeout? Why send him to the scorer's table you know, for the first dead ball after the timeout. I, I, I don't get that. I would I, I would guess that there's some people at home kind of wondering about that as well, well. Well, I tell you what, you never know when a thought will come into your head, do you? <laughs> and maybe, maybe Sam said, I forgot something right there. You never know. You would know that better than anybody. Some of the stuff right here, good trap on the right there off the high screen. And that's the intensity level. One thing the Raptors weren't doing as well as Real Madrid for uh, since the first quarter, they weren't playing as hard. Oh, here's Garbajosa. Oh, and he hits a big three. Boy, funny, good things happen when you play hard. You see the difference in intensity on the defensive side of the floor in that possession. You know Mitchell got after him. And at that timeout, maybe that's another reason why the substitution, maybe in a few seconds, didn't see the intensity he wanted on a call he made. Long rebound comes out and taken by Capono. You see the difference though? You see the Raptors just in the last 30 seconds. Out of a time, you have to play every possession like, like it's like it's your last. And you see the difference in what the, what that can do for you as Lopez returns in. Tuncheri will have a seat. Sam Mitchell, you know he was barking at his guy. Oh, he can bark. He gets after. And Mitchell, who better to talk about playing hard than him who made a career out of that? Called a road in Garbajosa off the bench, out of that timeout, and bam, we're tied at 68. Reverse layup. No. That was Pelicanos trying for it, and called a road back for Toronto. Into the corner. Capono. He is just flat off. He and Bargnani have not been able to find the mark. Pelicanos, oh, he had Legata Sekulic. On the left wing, right down the lane for an easy bucket, couldn't find him. No, he got a key and he carried the basketball instead of kicking it up. You're right, Capono on the other side. That's the shot. He's got, here's the reason why he got that big contract in Toronto. That corner has got to be his home, and he's got to be able to make that shot. I heard you calling the game with uh, Dave Johnson on Saturday, the Raptors-Celtics game, and Dave called that his office for yeah. Capono in the corner. I thought that was a great line by him, and true indeed. Here is Bargnani. Oh, that's a sweet move to the hoop, dribbling, finger-rolling, and giving Toronto a 70-68 lead. An example of the all-around skills that Bargnani has, and, and also the approach, the attack mode approach that he's developing. Good rebound underneath Pelicanos to Papadopoulos. And they'll set up. This is Raul Lopez. 
Down low to Papadopoulos. He's got the step, and he scores. We're tied at 70. He got the step because he had the angle that time. Garbarosa took a chance going low side around and then left it just wide open for Papadopoulos to go to the hoop. As good as Garbarosa is, and he's an NBA player, and Papadopoulos isn't, that's a mismatch for Real Madrid. Well, that was a fundamental error that time that Garbarosa hardly ever makes. He took a chance that way, and you're so vulnerable when you don't steal the basketball. Pelicanos out. Bojan. Bogdanovich into the game for Real Madrid. Haven't seen or heard much from Charles Smith since he suffered that fat lip. Off the elbow from Luke Jackson. And Jose Calderon at the free throw line. We talked about the TJ Ford Foundation, the Chris Bosch Foundation. Jose is a right-to-play athletic ambassador. And what he does off the court cannot be underestimated. Signed as a free agent out of Tau Ceramica by the Toronto Raptors. And had a wonderful Eurobasket 2007. Had Spain beaten Russia instead of suffering the buzzer, beat, uh, buzzer beater defeat at the hands of J.R. Holden, he probably would have been the MVP and not Andre Kirilenko. There's no doubt about it that Calderon has developed into an out. They call him the best backup point guard in the NBA, which means he would be a starter for the 15 teams that need a quality point guard. And a good starter. He just does not make mistakes. He makes heady plays. He's a better shooter than you think. He shot 52% last year. And a terrific team guy because he doesn't complain, and even though he, should get, he, could, he would get more minutes in a different situation. Yep, very unselfish. Bullock. Out of control as he went into the paint. That call's going to go his way. They got it on Jose Calderon. There's Charles Smith returning to the game right now. Yeah, lips a little fatter, no doubt about it. It's a basketball injury. Fat lips happen all the time. See, that's an injury where I don't feel sorry for a guy. You know what I mean? I mean, you'd rather it didn't happen, but it's the turned ankles and the torn labrums and that kind of thing. You get a fat lip in a basketball game, big deal. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. No, no, I'm with you on that. I just don't have a response. Sometimes you just leave me speechless. Well, my job is to set you up to say something cool. <laughs> I did not do my job on that play-by-play -play color guy exchange. I'll try better next time. Sam Mitchell, he just does not look like a happy guy right there, does he? No, he's not a happy camper because, again, they are playing harder now, the Raptors, but he had to motivate them to get to do so. And, hey, you're three games into your preseason schedule right now. You're down your best player on your team with Chris Bosh. Do you think you can just come out here and just beat a team like Real Madrid? It won't happen. You can see the score right now and the reason why. Well, their own directing traffic. Let's see if they utilize him. They're going to work Capono off baseline action. Garbajosa. What does he look good out here? Bargnani, I don't think he was looking for that pass. Got the wires crossed. Bargnani and Garbajosa. And Raul Lopez totally out of control. Easy call for the officials. And we remain tied. When the ball doesn't move prior to that type of penetration, prior to it, the defense can load up and be prepared for what's happening. Jason Capono saw this play going the whole time. But he didn't even really have to move that much. A couple feet over, just lined himself up and took the charge. Capono with a dirty work play, getting the ball back for the Raptors and the third foul of the game on Raul Lopez. We're going to step aside. You're not going anywhere, are you? We got a good one in Madrid. Points in the paint. Separated by just two points. And you figure if Chris Bosch is in this game, it'd be heavily in favor of Toronto, but he's not. He's out with a minor knee injury, a precautionary measure. Capono trying again, misses again. Look at Calderon. Oh, he missed the layup, but I'm not even mad at him. He got an offensive rebound in between four Real Madrid players. Here's Lopez. Quick shot. Oh, good rebound by Charles Smith. Goes back up and drew the foul. Real Madrid, Rick, has done a very good job this entire game of working the offensive glass. In the early going of this game, they really did when they were struggling offensively. They, Charles Smith made some threes, but they really helped themselves with second chance opportunities. And you see the effort by Charles Smith right there going up on the glass. Talked about his fat lip didn't keep him from being aggressive right there and attacking the basket. Should be fresh down the stretch right now with this game. He sat for a lot of minutes. Real Madrid trying to work a number of players in the rotation also is 
TJ Ford looks on. 2.20 to go in the third. Madrid by one. Capono trying to change that. Finally, he hits a three. Jason Capono, and now the floodgates might open. And you know what I like, though? It called around a couple yeah. possessions back. Look, the same kind of look for Capono, but he went right back to him and made the play and said, hey, you're a shooter. That's why we're giving you the big bucks. Make a play. Rosho hands off to Calderon. Back comes Toronto up two. Garbajosa. Back to Calderon. Pressure on Raul Lopez to contain the dribble right now. They're really hurting him off the screen right now. He goes under the screen. Calderon can't make him pay. That's risky with Calderon. Not a great outside shooter, but as I said, shot 52% from the field last year. He can knock down that shot. He's very good off the dribble in that type of situation. There's Charles Smith, 4-3, back into the game. He's got a couple of free throws, a three in Madrid, back on top by one. There's a reason why Real Madrid wants Charles Smith on their team. He is a well-known and been an outstanding European basketball player. Also spent a number of time in the NBA. Rasho, boy, he tried to jump right there, but only got about an inch off the floor. Lazarus Papadopoulos off a nice feed. Going the other way on Rosho. Scoring on Rosho, but they're waving it off. The offensive foul on Papadopoulos, and Rosho looks like he has a fat lip as well. A clear out with the off a hand, off arm, I should say, by Lazarus Papadopoulos. Reeling back. Let's see the clear. I'll tell you what, great angle right there. Let's see if we can see more movement. Oh yeah, when you go under the under the neck and into the chin when you reverse pivot, that is an offensive foul and a very good job by the officials. And Rosho taking a shot to the throat. That is an awkward and uncomfortable place to take an elbow. Papadopoulos now on the bench. Called a row. Ten on the shot clock. Nice rebound by Capono to Delfino. Back to Capono. He earned this shot. Off again. Garbajosa keeping it alive, but he's over the back of Raul Lopez, and we'll go the other way. Capono oh. makes that one jumper. You thought you mentioned it with the floodgates open, but he hasn't been able to build on it. That open look, and Garbajosa going after it, but that is a foul over the back. He says to Raul, did I foul you? Raul says... Doesn't matter what I think, the rest blew the whistle. We're going the other way. Again, good friends, right? Raul Lopez, there's Felipe Reyes right there, who's not playing in this game. Yeah, there's a brotherhood with these Spanish basketball players. Raul Lopez misses the first, especially the members of the Spanish national team, which Felipe Reyes, pictured a moment ago in cities, is obviously Garbo and Jose. One for two for Raul. Toronto, down two, late third in Madrid. Calderon, trying to change that. Oh, it's denied by Charles Smith. That was Vincent Hamilton, my bad. Here's Charles Smith, trying to add to the lead. Hanging, missing, followed up and in. And again, Blagada Sekudic. Too easy that time. It's another second chance opportunity for Real Madrid. Oh, that's a bad pass by Delfino. Up ahead to Charles Smith. Bad pass by Lopez. Saved by Smith into Lopez. And that'll do it. The third quarter is over. So, Real Madrid trailed by seven at the end of one. They trailed by two at the half. And now they take a four-point lead to the fourth quarter here against one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference of the NBA. The fourth quarter is next. Jorge Garbajosa and the Toronto Raptors. This is the final game for them at the NBA Europe Live Tour, presented by EA Sports. It's a 14-day tour, including the clinics and the NBA Cares events and the games and the travel and everything. And Brian Colangelo, president and GM of the Toronto Raptors, said it's good business for the NBA, which is good news for the Toronto Raptors when talking about his team coming over here. Now, teams are prohibited from traveling overseas in back-to-back -back years. And Brian Colangelo and the Toronto Raptors really like this setup, and it's realistic that they would go every other year, the Toronto Raptors, with the, all of their international players. It's a really good fit. So uh, won't be every year. It's uh, prohibited by the rules, but uh, you will see 
presumably the Toronto Raptors every other year here at the NBA Europe Live Tour. Rick Hamlin, Tim Capstraw, happy to have you with us for what figures and promises to be a good fourth quarter. And Tim, as we start this quarter, I want to ask you this. 14-day tour, three games played by the Raptors. A lot of travel here. They're in Rome. Now they're in Madrid. Uh, could fatigue be a factor with, you know, them trailing here going into the fourth quarter? Well, I mean, I think everybody gets tired in training camp, and they have even a term training camp, camp legs, where you just get exhausted and you can't move very well, but hey, this is preseason. You're trying to get yourself ready, and I think maybe they're tired, but certainly shouldn't be tired of playing basketball right now. It's too early in the year, and you know, last year, they struggled. They should get an interest, great angle at the basket right now. I see the big picture. Here's Mumbrew, the runner. Snap rebound by Joey Graham. Well, last season, one of the reasons why the Raptors were able to win the Atlantic Division is they were able to absorb the fact when Bosch was out with injuries, they still played quality basketball. So they don't want to use that as an excuse right now. Rosho fading away. I'm sure Sam Mitchell would like a duck under, an up and under, something going to the basket where you have a chance to get fouled. No chance to get fouled on a fadeaway. Well, they haven't been able to utilize the three-point line. They haven't been able to draw second defenders and to get that drive and kick and pick and pop game going that the Raptors are known for. They got a foul on Joey Graham working against Vincent Hamilton. And Vincent Hamilton has not seen a lot of playing time in this game. There is Vincent. Got the mismatch he wanted right there. And Again, not a lot of size on the floor for the Raptors aside from Nesterovic, so the post-up opportunities will present themselves. Lopez the ball fake, out to Smith for three. The glass again, the Real Madrid is hurting the Raptors with second chance opportunities, another reset. The Raps really look like they have heavy legs. Oh, that's a nice knockaway by Carlos Delfino. Now, the thing is, the Joey Grams, the Rosho Nesteroviches haven't played that much the Joey Grahams, the Juan Dixons. So, you know, if you're talking about the Anthony Parkers and the TJ Fords, a little fatigue, okay, I may be listening, but the bench guys that are finally happy to get some run here, I'm not listening to them. And again, Sam Mitchell doesn't want to hear a bit of that. Players going to the floor, shot clock violation. Raul Lopez almost hit a Harlem Globetrotter style <laughs> shot from right inside a half court after the buzzer sounded. Like metal lark lemon out there. <laughs> the heave from half. But I, I, how did those shots always go in every single time, right? That had to be an optical illusion, right? <laughs> but for the spark right now, and you know, you know that Calderon's going to get a lot of minutes right now, but you would think that the team not playing well, the Raptors, that Sam Mitchell's got to consider getting T.J. Ford back on the floor with the way he played, and he, you know, but Calderon has played well, and this might be another one of those situations you might experiment putting both on the floor. Delfino. Oh, those looks. Oh, but Mumbrew just lost it out of bounds. Can't even blame a teammate for that one. No miscommunication. He just fumbled it. Ted Danson in the crowd enjoying the game. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> when I stop laughing, we'll get back to the play-by-play. -play. That was awesome. That was awesome. And his work on Kirby your enthusiasm. Outstanding. With Larry David, come on. That Ted, da Ted Danson has finally found a home. Forget about cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Colangelo. That's really him. Yeah, that's no look-alike situation. No, no, no. He is, in fact, in the crowd here in Madrid, clocking his Raptors, Carlos Delfino. Somebody going to finish the play for the Raptors. Oh, Delfino. These wings that we've talked about are let the Raptors down with their inability to capitalize in scoring opportunities. Ooh, crafty. Look at Lopez spinning. Mombrou, Charles Smith. Oh, it was in and out. Rebound down low by Blagata Sekunic, and it's taken eventually by Garbajosa. Everything but the bucket for Real Madrid. And Toronto's got to capitalize now. They've got good energy in there within themselves, don't they? The Real Madrid, the way they're moving and playing. Good bounce. Joey Graham, another perimeter player who is off. Enough guys getting to the free throw line. Jorge just making something happen. Well, that's what they need to do right now to slow down this game get themselves back regrouped is get themselves to the free throw line some because it's been they've been just very jump shot happy have the Toronto Raptors 
and you know they make a living because of that but some nights they're not going down and where are you going to get your offense you need to do more of that take the ball at the basket garbajosa was fouled hard right there by benson hamilton and it was a play that was eerily similar to the play late last year when he got tangled up with al jefferson and suffered a devastating injury as he hits the first back on march 26th he broke his fibula displaced his ankle and suffered ligament damage needed surgery obviously and his status for the world uh, for the eurobasket tournament was being very much up in the air now the spanish doctors cleared him the raptors doctors weren't so sure but brian colangelo and the raptors said we love this guy we know he's all about playing ball especially for his country so we're going to let him play we're going to take this chance now the spanish national team had to take out a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar insurance policy and they paid that money and they got jorge garbajosa to play he played well and then J.R. Holden ruined the whole thing by hitting that buzzer beater, <laughs> costing Spain the Eurobasket Championship. But Jorge, a tough hombre, who is playing and playing well. And so far, with these games at NBA Europe Live and with the practices, he has not been worse for the wear. And he draws another foul here from behind. So Jorge will go back to the free throw line, where now you get a chance to talk about him. <laughs> he is tough. But that was an uh, inexcusable bailout foul right there that the Raptors need to definitely capitalize on to get their momentum back. Hey, a look at the NBA preseason international matchups, and they continue tonight, 7 p.m., Maccabi Tel Aviv against the New York Knicks from the Garden. Also tonight, not on NBA TV, Panathinaikos against the Houston Rockets. Saturday, October 13th, it's Panathinaikos. The second half of the Texas two-step to play in the Spurs at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, and Monday, October 15th, 10.30 a.m., it's Algiris Conas from Lithuania against the Golden State Warriors. And the calendar continues with Algiris against the Raps up there in Toronto, 7 p.m. Then Thursday, October 18th on NBA TV, 8 a.m. The Chinese national team against Orlando. And Friday, October 19th, 7 p.m. It is Algiris once again on NBA TV against Gilbert Arenas and the Washington Wizards. And as we bring you back to action, Jorge Garbajosa at the line. Garbajosa trying to take advantage now and be very aggressive with how he attacks the basket. We talked about utilizing the free throw line when shots aren't going down and Garbajosa starting to contribute for the Raptors cause that way. The hometown kid, born in Madrid. Turning him and Calderon are going to get the brunt of the minutes. A player that was... Outstanding for Real Madrid was Luis Bullock that hasn't played in quite a while. Well, they're deep. They got to get their guys in there. Here's Lul. He was big in the first half. Speaking of big, Benson Hamilton snatched that rebound and put it up and in. You can bet that Sam Mitchell's going to have a whole host of blocking out drills right now uh, in, in his next training camp practices, Rick, because they have done an awful job boxing out Real Madrid securing defensive rebound. A look in the crowd. They're loving it here in Madrid. The NBA is in the house. And Real Madrid, one of the top teams in the EuroLeague. And it's no coincidence that we have a good game. Andrea Bargnani, seven-footer out of Rome. And he hits the first. Second in Rookie of the Year voting last year to Brandon Roy and had the option on his contract exercised by the Raptors in Rome. And I don't think that was a coincidence. <laughs> well, he played well as the year. He had a terrific first year. And they did an excellent job, I thought, the Raptors of, of downplaying expectations for him. I remember Colangelo saying he will not be the Rookie of the Year. So don't even think about that because we drafted him number one. And then he almost wins it. And then he almost wins it, and you know he's going to have an excellent second season. Benson Hamilton. Can he track it down? Out of bounds. No, not out of bounds. Well, now it is. And Real Madrid will get it back. 7.24 to go in the basketball game. The action has gotten a little bit ragged here in the fourth. Madrid up, 81-80. Bullock back in the game, but another chance now, another second chance opportunity 
for Real Madrid, and, and the Raptors are not hitting first, and they're not boxing, they're not pushing Real Madrid back. They're watching the flight of the basketball, and shots are going up. Not blocking out. If they get this one. No, they don't get this one either. Boy, oh boy, Sam Mitchell's going to get after him on that. Finally, a rebound. Parker snatched that off the Sergio Yule miss. Bargnani, the screen for Calderon. Calderon, knifing, slicing, scoring, reverse. And Toronto takes the lead, 82-81. When he can get the defense back on his heels, get going downhill, he did an excellent job after that of getting to the opposite side of the basket to negate the shot blocker. Lewis Bullock draws the foul on Joey Graham. And you mentioned it earlier for Joey Graham. This is a huge year. You sign a contract uh, when you're a rookie first-round pick. It goes three years. He's in his third year. So this is decision time for the Toronto Raptors on Joey Graham. As Calderon checks out the bad news for him, they brought in Delfino and Capono in the offseason to play his spot. Well, he's a ridiculous athlete, but he's been what we call a blind date, right? Inconsistent, night in and night out. That is one of my favorite cap straw-isms. Along with the Noah's Ark team, which you trot out from time to time. And the Toronto Raptors are, in fact, that. They, they do go too deep at every position, if not three deep at some. They do. They Certainly on the perimeter, they do. At the point guard and on the wings. And there's really, you know, Bosch and, Bosch and Bargnani. That might be a big short on the front line right now. Charles Smith into the corner for Sergio Lull and Bargnani. Draws the offensive foul, so Toronto gets it back up one. Good job by Bargnani that time, anticipating and drawing the foul. It's a good opportunity for Bargnani to kind of be the man. You know, yep. with Chris Bosch not in there, you're in a tight game here, very much on the road in Madrid. Good opportunity for Bargnani to get some crunch time minutes, some go-to opportunities here. Knocked out of bounds off of Real and 14 on the shot clock for Toronto. Be interesting to see, is he going to be a focal point as far as down on the block? Probably not because TJ Ford's back on the floor and I like to play that pick and pop game. Ford was outstanding, but the guy that defended them the best is on him right now, Sergey Yule. Ford. Fading away over Papadopoulos. Bargnani the rebound. The fake and the score. Oh, my goodness. I mean, if he's still working on the low post game, he's got a long way to go. I can't wait to see him five years from now. Outstanding play that time. The effort to retreat the rebound in an area that he's really trying to improve on and then right back up strong. Ravel called on the brush foul there. And securing his position. He's upset about that on the screen. Let's see. Coming over here. Not stationary. You know, who the... The problem with that play right there is Lewis Bullock has got to kind of wait for that screen to be sent. Not enough contact for you, huh? Well, if they, I don't know what they called there. If they called a moving screen, I didn't see Axel moving. So, a break for the Toronto Raptors. Sam Mitchell and his team in a meat grinder. We're in the late stages of the second game of a doubleheader here in Madrid from the Palacio de Deportes. The Raptors and Real Madrid in a good one. 84-81, wraps over Madrid. Rick Hamlet, Tim Capstra. Happy to have you with us. Under six minutes to go in the game. High screen game for Ford right now. See if he can get going downhill, get some penetration. Keep him out of the paint. Since the first quarter, they have beat him up nicely. Joey Graham, out to four, thought about a three, drove inside, Graham. It's rebounded by Bargnani. Bargnani helping with the glass. The extra pass, Parker had a good look, Bargnani a better look, right inside the line. They cannot hit from the outside in this game. Real Madrid back, Lewis Bullock not shy, and he hits a three to tie at 84. Bullock back on the floor, the best player on the floor for Real Madrid, set for a long time in the second half. Papadopoulos with the rebound, the kick up, and Bullock did not hesitate at all. Bargnani, the fake, the kick to Garbajosa for three. Parker, the weak side board, and he just flicks it up and in. Nicely done. Well, he does a lot of little things to help a team, and if you're at winning time of the game, you want to have Anthony Parker on the floor. 
Well, we are at winning time. He is on the floor, and he's making plays. He's got to defend Lewis Bullock right now off this baseline action. There he is. They're moving it well, Real Madrid. Charles Smith kicks it out. Three-pointer good from the top of the key, and Real Madrid takes the lead, 87-86. Lulz, third three of the game. Well, I tell you what, I don't know if anybody drives and kicks better than the Toronto Raptors in the NBA, but Real Madrid does a heck of a job with it in their style of play in EuroLeague basketball, giving the Raptors a lot of their own medicine. For DeBargnani, just enough room, but he missed the shot and the rebound to Hervel. I can't wait to watch this team in the EuroLeague this year. The confidence in with which they move the basketball and the drive and kicks. A lot of guys that can make plays on the floor. Here's Bullock. Drive, kick. Here's Lola again. And he hits again. Oh, what a game he is playing. He's the third straight point guard. And he's going off here in Madrid. Real up 90, 86 over the Raptors with 3.35 to go. And Sam Mitchell takes another time out. His team hanging on for dear life here in Madrid at the end of the NBA Europe Live Tour. Tim, earlier you were talking about how the Atlantic Division, there's a big three. The Toronto Raptors and the New Jersey Nets and also the Boston Celtics. What about the big three at the top of the Spanish League? Real Madrid, Unicaya Malaga, and FC Barcelona. Is that going to be a fun race or what? It sure is. Real Madrid is showing us an awful lot in this game. And how about the over the last couple minutes on a 9-2 run utilizing the three-point line? Ford to Parker to Garbajosa. They work it around to Bargnani. Off the dribble. Look to travel and get away with it. And Johan Plaza hating it. And Garbajosa goes glass and brings it in in a two-point game. How about that? Garbajosa's got to. Shaking his head going down. Knowing he was very fortunate on that shot. Papadopoulos. The low touch. We haven't seen much of this in this game. Working against Bargnani. Another fake. Goes hook and scores. He might not go over you, but he'll go around you and utilize his width against your length. And Papadopoulos got his number called in a big possession. Real Madrid trying to do what Unakaya Malaga did to Memphis two days ago. Euroleague beating NBA. Bargnani. Defended well by Bullock. I can't believe I'm saying that. And Anthony Parker. Oh, they got an offensive foul. And Parker's beside himself. Well, he had the matchup he wanted. He had to mismatch with Papadopoulos on him on the perimeter. Boy, Anthony, Anthony Parker says, how can you call that a charge right there? As the big man was just lumbering on my side and flopped and got the call. What a tough one. Some mental, mental toughness right now by the Raptors. They're on the road. One away from a DQ for Anthony Parker. And Sam Mitchell, they keep showing him on the bench, sitting down. He just looks furious. And it's the kind of thing, usually he's standing up, stomping his feet. He almost looks just resigned to the fact that I'm not getting it from my guys today. As it is, they're still in the game, Tim. They also understand this is not your typical preseason game. There is something at stake right oh, yeah. now. There's no doubt about it. Real Madrid with the Rock up four. Under two and a half to go in the game. Charles Smith dribbled himself into trouble and he turns it over. Anthony Parker back. Still with it. And he's fouled. Anthony Parker will go to the free throw line. And he was tagged there, I believe, by Sergio Lull. I talked about it. I mean, Anthony Parker called on a foul previously, but he does so many little things and he makes big plays when you need one. Outstanding anticipation, seeing that play develop, shooting the gap and then getting to the line on the other end. And you know Parker's upset with himself. That's that's a layup he should have hit even with the contact. And he hits the first free throw. Wonderful shooter, Anthony Parker. 48% overall last year. 44 from deep. That was fifth best in the NBA. And 83% right here from the strike where he hits two for two. Well, the best thing I can say about Parker, he's a winning player. You know, the MVP of the early, but it's not because of blow you away with what he does. He just wears you down with his consistent solid play driving and scoring it is Sergio Lul again not a show with the young guys Sergio Yule Ford trying to answer Garbajosa out to Bargnani foot on the line it goes that's a long two and we got a two point game with under two minutes to go they showed the offense they put right. a three up on the board his foot was on the line Tim 
Caught a break right there. They showed some offense. Now can they show some defense right now, the Raptors? They changed it. They got that back to a two. Out of bounds. Off of Real Madrid. Toronto gets it back. And who made the play? Anthony Parker again anticipating shooting the gap. Just having a great feel for the game. And another timeout. So we'll step aside for one minute. Don't go anywhere. This is exactly what we have come to expect from the NBA Europe Live Tour. Started last year, going on this year. When the NBA and the EuroLeague gets together in Europe, it's always a good game. It's just the way it goes. And the Raptor mascot having some fun here. Thousands and thousands of miles from home. Toronto with the Rock. They're down two. And Tim, this is the final game of the 2007 NBA Europe Live Tour presented by EA Sports. And you know what? We're going out in style. Well, yeah, tight game right now. But the Raptors understand they're not only representing Toronto. They're representing the NBA right now. You to see the foot on the line by Andrea Bargnani. Excellent ball movement, kick out pass. You saw Lopez right yes. there saying two, two, two. And Bargnani needs to change the color of his shoes. If it were navy blue, he might have gotten the benefit of that. But the red shoe on the blue line, that's a dead giveaway. Well, Rick Pitino used to say the foot on the three-point line is, is, is the worst shot in basketball. If you're going to be that far back, make sure you're, you set yourself just behind that line, especially with the ability of Bargnani to make deep threes. So here we go. Minute and a half to go. Wraps down two. T.J. Ford against Papadopoulos. Look at Lazarus playing him out at the three-point line and doing a good job of it. Sure did. Garbo lost the handle. Picked off by Papadopoulos. And he does wise to set it up. How about that defensive job by Lazarus Papadopoulos containing the dribble of T.J. Ford? That might have been the key possession of this game. We'll see. Charles Smith to Lewis Bullock. He drives. Into the corner for Smith. This would be big. And it is! A three from the corner and a five-point lead for Real Madrid with 62 seconds left. Two Americans putting a big play against the Toronto Raptors. Garbo can't answer. In Lazarus, Papadopoulos the rebound and Madrid looking good. Wow, the outside shot just has vacated the Toronto Raptors in this game. Smith right now. Him and Bullock working together. This would be a knockout punch. Can't be delivered. Oh, but the rebound by Papadopoulos. He misses the dunk. Oh, and Garbajosa is down, holding the back of his head. Anthony Parker down as well. They collided, hit heads, and with 30.9 seconds to go in the game, the worry for the Raptors is no longer the game. It's the health of two of their best players, Parker and Garbajosa. Oh no, Garbajosa backed into Anthony Parker and that was gruesome. More so for Parker than Garbajosa. Parker got it in the front and Garbajosa the back of the head. Both, both right now. Garbajosa. That's going to be easier to shake off for Garbo than it is for Parker. Took that right in the eye and the cheek. That dude is tough as nails. They both are. Garbajosa and Parker. Not what the Toronto Raptors wanted. And good to see both players, you know, on their feet. Not being tended to any longer by the trainers, so they're good to go. That's the good news right there, Rick. When both of those guys were down on the floor, you did not know how significantly this injury could possibly have been. The ball moved the shot. Time shot by Bullock. Working together with Charles Smith. And that's the one that's given the Real Madrid two-possession lead right now. Well, the Raptors are going to get the ball back, so they're not dead yet. And that Raptor fan bombing off that shot by Charles Smith. And look at that reaction right there. That's beautiful. You see three-point shooting right now. 14 makes for Real Madrid in this game. 32 attempts, really going after the line. An excellent graphic right there to display where they've done their damage.
Jason Granger, player for MMT Estudiantes, in the crowd checking it out. What are they expecting, a snowstorm here in Madrid? What's going on there with the parka and the hoodie? That's a heavy look right there. Juan Dixon into the game for Toronto. Capono in as well. They're going to be looking for a three here down five with 30.9 to go. Looking for a three, but they will take it two. Reason what they probably want. Bargnani, quick trigger. Good! What a shot by Andrea Bargnani. It's down to a two-point game with 23.3 to go and the foul given by Capono. No doubt about Bargnani hitting that one. Caught, shot, confidently, bang. The quick release and the ability at seven feet to shoot over contesting people. He's able to catch quickly and just drain it. And everybody on Real Madrid knew he would be a primary focal point of this, this offensive play. Ford finds him and then absolutely the quick, deep release. Sam Mitchell likes it but knows there's still work to be done. Yeah, but that shot's got to have you just salivating about the prospects this season for Barn Yanni. He'll be in the starting lineup last year, mostly off the bench. And I think his career about to explode. His confidence and comfort level is taking a big leap this season. Sergio Lule at the line. He's been a monster off the bench for Real Madrid. Hits a clutch free throw. And it's now a three-point game. Here comes the big one. Twenty-year-old Spanish guard trying to make this a two-possession game. He cannot rebound Anthony Parker. Toronto down three, still with much life. TJ four. He's going to take it all the way in. Oh, and he threw it away to Sergio Lul, who has just been a killer for the Raptors this afternoon. Excellent job by Yule, knowing that and laying back and just knowing that the Toronto Raptors were going to be thinking three with the anticipation. He saw that play developing, and he's been terrific all game long and right there to defensive play of the game. Well, Yule's been really terrific defensively when he came in the guard. T.J. Ford in the first half provided the spark with his offensive ability. And you saw that was a great visual right there of anticipation of seeing, even though Ford was ahead of him, knowing who was at the three-point line and how dangerous that could be. One more for Lul. It's already four. Now it's five. And the Raptors in a deep hole now with 15 ticks left, down by five. They extend the defense. Here's TJ. Needs a three. Pulls up. He's fouled. Oh, and he, that was on line. Almost hit that shot. Now, was his foot on the line or was it behind? Two or three free throws. Tough to see from that angle. Plus, he was leaning in. Ooh, just hit the front of the rim. Three right now, the shooting three. Fisher gave the signal. TJ, nothing but net on the first. Well, that's not what you want to do if you're on defense, but TJ Ford can make you off balance very easily. And a foul. But they so did. far, so good. Got it down to a three point game. Now you got to hit this one. Chris Bosch. Out with a minor knee injury. Looking on as his Raptors trying to come from behind to beat Real Madrid. TJ Ford did his job. Drew the foul. Hit all three free throws. Big time clutch possession for TJ Ford. It's a two-point game. Real Madrid 100, Toronto 98. And now Toronto obviously is going to foul, and it's on Real Madrid to go back to the free throw line and hit the free throw. Well, right now, but the, the Raptors could be even a little bit more aggressive, Rick. They may be able to get a turnover quickly, be able to get a quick look, and then give the foul. I should think turnover first, and then give the foul just after. You never know. A team could be careless with the basketball. But you hate to waste too much time doing it. You can't be too cute, but certainly on the inbounds, go for the steal. The Toronto Raptors are one of the best teams in the NBA. Well, at least the Eastern Conference. You know, they're, I would say they're a top 10, top 12 team in the NBA. And if things don't change here on the scoreboard, they're going to lose to Real Madrid. And Utakaya Malaga just beat Memphis on Tuesday. And last year, a couple of early teams beat NBA teams. 
I'm not saying that the Euro League can come over and hang in the NBA 30 win style as Maccabi Tel Aviv will be playing the New York Knicks in the Garden. That'll be live on NBA TV coming up at 7 p.m. about an hour from now. But my point is that the EuroLeague is closing the gap on the NBA. There's more talent over here than there ever has been. And when the NBA and EuroLeague plays over here in Europe, it's always a good game. And you know, the EuroLeague has beaten the NBA from time to time. Well, certainly an awful lot of respect, certainly, the EuroLeague has gotten over the last couple of years with their quality play and their talent. They were able to have their camp a little bit longer. Let's see what transpires late. Early foul. About a second one off the clock. Nine-tenths to be exact. We have 8.8 .8 to go. And the foul given by Jose Calderon. Sam Mitchell already drawing up the next play. Does he have a timeout left? That is the question. Looks like he's taken a million of them in this game. Well, here's the big free throws right now by Bullock. And he is the guy you want at the stripe if you are Johan Plaza, head coach for Real Madrid. Bullock. It's a three-point game. It's another one, and Toronto may be flying back to Toronto on a losing note. Thirty-one-year-old American Lewis Bullock, big free throw, and it's good. Four-point lead for Real Madrid, and you can tell by the body language of the Toronto Raptors as they head over to talk to Sam Mitchell that this one's just about done. It's a nice suit, though, for Sam. He always looks good, Sam Mitchell, but right now he wants to drop. He's got 8.8 seconds left on the clock. Down four points. He's going to utilize his timeout to get himself a look, try to drop an opportunity for a three-point shot. He's got to take some chances right now, and if it goes down, and then give another quick foul. One of the big plays of the game right now. In transition, Papadopoulos with the bust-out dribble, and then Bullock just confidently draining it. Sergey Yule right there off the kick out by Vincent Hamilton in the three-point line. Boy, the way that Real Madrid has utilized this in this game. The Raptors have gotten back into this late by utilizing this guy's three-point shooting ability, Andrea Bargnani, but they had struggled from their line. The wing players weren't able to knock down shots at the level they need to. Pau Gasol and the Memphis Grizzlies beat MMT Estudiantes in our first game today here in Madrid. And it's looking like it's going to be one and one. NBA against EuroLeague. Lewis Bullock has given Real Madrid a lead that I just don't think they're going to relinquish this late in the game. Raptors get it back out of the timeout. Let's see what Sam Mitchell designed. Into the corner, Juan Dixon driving, scoring finger roll style, two-point game, 4.4 to go, and the foul is given by Dixon on Lewis Bullock. You get the two right there, and you'll take them, but you don't know how much time you really have. That's why the three can really help you in that situation, because if you give a foul, it, it's, it could still be, if they make the free throws, a one-possession game. This goes back to a two-possession games if these two free throws are, are converted and game's over. I was thinking the exact same thing you just said, that a two just does you no good right there. Get you right back where you started. Well, and, yeah, then you're, you're gambling on him missing. He's got to miss one of the free throws for you to have any kind of chance. So here's Lewis Bullock. Three-point game. And at the risk of jinxing him, which I've been known to do, and many other broadcasters have done to free throw shooters, doesn't look like he's missing this one. <laughs> 92% from the stripe last year in the EuroLeague. And it's a four-point game, and Toronto is just about done. T.J. Ford with three seconds left. Here's the three. Got it off and hit it, but it's a one-point game. Lewis Bullock hitting those free throws. He is the hero for Real Madrid. So the curtain comes down on the 2007 version of the NBA Europe Live Tour.